Hi there, it's Marzena. Since my last figurine was a bee fairy that was a Monster High slash OMG doll hybrid, I decided that with this one I will show you, and also myself, that you can make a totally different pieces based on a similar idea. So today I will be making another yellow and black girl, but in a slimmer and I think more creepy form. A wasp fairy. So let's get to work! As you may know, Gulia was my first choice for a bee doll, before I changed my concept to a curvier body type. And I still wanted to customize her, so perfect! I started as always by cutting the doll's hair as short as possible. Don't mind Claudine there, she was just the arms donor. Then I let the head soak in the boiling hot water for about one minute. Yeah, I was working on those dolls simultaneously. This hot yoga will make the vinyl head softer and easier to remove from the neck pack. Last time I was pretty disgusted by the glueless hair plugs from the OMG's head. And here I got the same thing with Golia. Ugh, where is my satisfying gooey mass? I removed her factory face with 100% acetone. And I shrunk the head with 90% acetone and 10% water solution. We'll leave the link to the tutorial down in the description box. Here she is after one slow shrinking session. This process takes twice as much time as the slow method, but I think it is worth the wait. I marked where I wanted to sculpt the additional insect eyes and also where her hairline will be. I painted the scalp with yellow and black acrylic paints. As you can see, her design is already different than my bee girl. Time for the reroute. Yes, once again I'm going to reroute a shrunken head. Because it is easy. I used my do-it-yourself reroute tool from an X-Acto knife handle and a needle cut on the angle. I am not sure why, but there is some kind of urban legend that you can't reroute a shrunken head. Yes? you can. You just need to poke a new hole for each hair strand. It is time-consuming, as I heard every reroute is, but it is pretty simple. And exactly like with my previous doll, I didn't have any problems with rerouting this one. Also, before you ask, I like to leave my needle longer. It just works better for me than a really short needle. When the whole head was done, I placed two pins on each side of the head and glued them in place. They will work as a reinforcement for epoxy eyes. I secured everything inside the head with high tack glue. To rejoin her with her body, I needed to trim the neck pack and widen the neck hole a little bit. With a small dose of elbow grease, our wasp's head was finally back on her neck. I really love her new proportions. I secured her hair and body and I sculpted the insect eyes with epoxy sculpt.
After it all cured, I slightly sanded it down with a nail buffer. Then I just wiped off the dust. I assumed that Golia's skin color won't be as problematic to cover with yellow as Honey Swamp was. So once again I skipped the white base. And I was right. After three layers of Mr. Super Clear, I switched to soft pastels and I added some shadows and blushing to the face. One more layer of MSC and to the pencils. I decided on some insect-like patterns on her face and the whole black eyes to emphasize even more that she is a more creepy and badass cousin of my sweet bee fairy. Every time when I saw that the colors were not building up anymore, I sprayed the face with another layer of MSC. This face up was pretty easy, so I could quickly add some acrylics to it. I thought that it would be cool to add a little purple slash blue shine to the eyes with some nail dust. To try it out I covered one insect eye with a base coat, cured it under UV lamp, rubbed the dust in, covered it with a top coat, cured it again and wiped it with a nail degreaser. And it didn't work. Weird. It works on nails every time. Well, maybe it's because I always use a color after the base coat. Let's try it that way. Nah, even the paint started to chip off and it was cured with MSC. I didn't want to ruin the whole face up, so even if this was a cool effect, I decided to give up and just forget about it. I went back to the acrylics and finished the face up with white highlights and catch lights.
And you know what? No. I didn't want to give up on that shiny dust. I tried one more thing by just rubbing the dust straight onto the acrylic layer and fixed it with Liquitex gloss varnish. Wasn't as shiny as I imagined, but still pretty nice. I'm proud of you, stubborn me. Let's unwrap the girl and mutilate some corpses for her new arms, shall we? I drill the sockets for her additional limbs on both sides of her chest. I also cut her in half for the pose that I had in mind. And also to give her this hourglass figure, because in Poland we call it a waist of the wasp. Of course I also sanded down her panties. Then I decided that the pose will look even cooler if I modify the crotch and the butt on one side. Now I could attach the limbs, put the torso together and glued the doll in her final pose. Some people don't quite understand why I am gluing my dolls in place. Shouldn't dolls be articulated, like the ones from Delightful or Poppin Atelier? Well, that's why. If I would leave a functional articulation on my dolls, I wouldn't be able to display them in all the poses that I have in mind. I can achieve that only by cutting them into pieces, repositioning them and gluing them in certain poses. Glued to a stand, they can stand by themselves and they don't need a doll stand holding their waists. And also I can cover their joints to make them look more realistic. Making the doll figurines just works better for me than making articulated dolls. Just a personal preference. Okay, she needed her high knee, so I made the base from XPS styrofoam scraps. But before I could attach it, I decided to cover all the gaps and some of the joints with epoxy. To make it a little bit more interesting, I sculpted those pointy shapes at her shoulders and pelvis. On the next morning, when the epoxy cured, I drilled the holes for her insect butt and her wings and sanded the body with a nail buffer cause with an insect butt attached it would be more difficult.
Now I could attach the styrofoam piece and covered it with epoxy. With my previous fairy, her bee butt was just round and striped. But wasps are different. Their abdomen is like segmented and you can clearly see how the segments are overlapping each other. So I tried to recreate it. good. While her behind and the rest of the covered joints were curing, I prepared her wings. Used the same pattern as on my bee fairy, but I slimmed it down a little. I wrapped the patterns in plastic wrap, placed the wire on top and poured the UV resin. After it cured under UV lamp, I covered the other side with resin too. Made all four wings and sanded down the sharp edges with my micromotor. Then I drew the patterns on each wing using permanent marker and fixed everything with a top coat nail polish that I cured under UV lamp. Not bad. So the epoxy cured and I could sand the remaining parts. wipe the dust away with a wet tissue. I noticed some cracking, so I fixed it with a super glue. To the acrylics! First, let's even the body color by covering the green epoxy with grey paint. Then three layers of yellow and black for the limbs and boobs and tummy. I also decided to paint the lower legs, feet, forearms and hands yellow because actual wasps have limbs like this. Finally, I could paint the stripes on her insect butt. Unlike bees, wasps have pretty awesome patterns on their abdomens, so once again I tried to recreate it as close as I could. After that, and uh, after three layers of MSC, it was time for some blushing and shading. At first I planned to keep the black parts just black, but eventually I blushed them with a red pastels. Even if it almost disappeared after MSC coat, it gave a little bit of life to those black parts. Time to unwrap this candy babe and cut off those hair. Just a little bit. I brushed the hair and I used water and hairspray to tame them. was aiming for some short and slick badass hairstyle. And because I am a lousy hairdresser, it ended up a little bit too much mohawkish, but still badass, right? 
With heated up poking tool I made the holes for the antennas. So let's make some. I used a thin wire and warbler. I shaped the antennas, painted them with acrylics and fixed everything with Liquitex gloss varnish. All that left was the stand. And I didn't have a clear idea what to do. Then I found this piece of cardboard from IKEA package and I thought that it looks like a honeycomb. And even if wasps don't make any honey, well, sue me, I will use it anyway. But to add some more badass vibe, I also added some thorn bush on the back. Of course, I sculpted everything with Warbler. I sprayed the whole piece with a black spray paint. Then painted it all with acrylics. And for the best part, I mixed an UV resin with a yellow ink and poured it on the honeycomb. As the last touch, I glossed every black parts of the doll with a gloss varnish. I assembled all the pieces together and voila! So here she is. I think I managed to succeed in showing that I can come up with completely different concepts based on a similar theme. And I really like to think about my wasp fairy as a badass cousin of the bee fairy from my last video. Overall, I really do like how this one turned out. I do love her pose in particular. She definitely fits into my fairy team. And what do you think? Do you like the idea of making sweet bee and creepy wasp for some comparison? I hope you enjoyed this process. If you did, don't forget to like this video. If you have some thoughts to share with me, feel free to leave a comment and if you wonder what I'm gonna do next, click the subscribe button with the bell for future notifications. And remember, the Halloween is coming. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and see you soon!
I think they know. 